Hi guys, welcome to the Board of Studies MCQs for SCPM. Our commitment is towards doing each and every question of this subject. Everything that is possible, we are trying to be doing. Our first level was to be covering every possible question from the module. Part of them are also there on the Board of Studies portal. So therefore, those will not be done again. Okay, there is no use of replicating the videos. That is first thing. Second, now we are doing every possible question from Board of Studies. ICAI uh, had made a Board of Studies portal whereby the students can go and practice. We start to take questions from there also. Trying to be covering every possible question, whether it's a standalone question or a case study based question, but everything that is possible, we are trying to be doing. If there is anything that gets left out, always feel free to communicate to us and we shall be glad to help you all. Any other doubts that you might have can be communicated to us on our telegram ID that goes by the name of at the rate agent X. And in case you wish to be enrolling for the complete course with unlimited views, then you all can see the description. You all can see the link below in the description. Once you enroll, automatically lecture start. There is absolutely no need for you all to be calling us for any reason. It's an automated system. Everything happens by itself. And once you enroll, just one small thing, you can watch the lectures wherever you all want. On the laptop or on the Android app or on the iOS app, wherever you all want. One day on laptop, one day on iOS, whatever you all want. Okay, so that freedom, that synchronization is always there. We are on to chapter number two. Chapter number two was all about modern business environment. This chapter is mainly all about total quality management. Mean. So the question for today is healthcare produces specialized medical equipment used by number of medical practitioners. Okay. It has identified a critical success factor. Okay. CSF is what these are objectives that you wish to be achieving. If you achieve all these small, small objectives in end, you will earn the vision of the company. Customers should find zero defects with the medical equipment. Aim for zero defective sale units. Okay. Now, this is also sometimes called as a funda of Six Sigma, whereby defects are, are only 3.4 per million units, almost the zero defects. Which of the following would be a KPI, key performance indicator, that directly relates to zero defective sale? CSF identified above. Now, two things. Uh, if you have done entire course with me, these things are uh, embedded in your brains. There are two things. One of them is CSF. Other of them is KPI. You want to be getting, say, a rank in CA final. That is your objective. That is your CSF. But then you should always be measuring every now and then. Okay, will you achieve your aim or not? Sir, how will I measure that? There are a lot of ways. First, how many hours you study? Then uh, how much portion you have completed? Say uh, three months before, then two months before and one month before. How many revisions you have done? How many mock papers you have given? What are the marks that you have scored in the mock papers? All these are data center points, okay? These are KPIs. This will help you to measure whether you will achieve your objective or not. So your uh, CSF are those things that you wish to be achieving. Your KPIs in this case are uh, basically what data you would like to be measuring. So therefore, you know whether you will achieve your objective or not, okay? So they are asking you that now we are aiming for zero defective sale units. So therefore, there should not be any defective units that we sell to the customer. Okay. And what will indicate that? Please bring me the four options. Four options. First, training hours imparted to manufacturing staff about in quality control for the manufacturing process. Okay. So like, you know, zero defective sale units can be measured by this, whatever the first option says, how many hours of training you give to the worker. Okay. Second option. Cost of product returns and replacement cost. Okay. Third one. Cost of inspection and testing. Okay. Uh, fourth, quality certifications from external agencies like the uh, ISO 2000 up and so on. You get all these uh, certifications from the government. Okay. And from the agencies also. Now let's go like, you know, one by one only. The first one. Training hours imp uh, imparted to manufacture the staff about the quality control 
for manufacturing process. See one thing. If you give training to your workers, automatically your quality will improve. That is for sure. But then it itself does not guarantee that there will be zero defectives. I do not think so. You might give training also. Then also the customer might reject the product. Okay, although the quality was better, but then it might not be as per the specifications or the quality perception of the customer. If you all have done this chapter, this is something like preventive cost. Okay, preventive cost helps you to prevent certain quality issues. Like, you know, it helps you to prevent, say, bad quality. Okay, but it itself does not measure whether it is zero defective sale units or not. If you spend more hours on training, yes, over a period of time, your returns will start to be falling down. That is for sure. Okay. But then it is not a correct measure for it. Okay. Because the moment in this case you start to be measuring, say how many hours of training you have given, that does not mean that customer will not reject your product. Okay. So like, you know, it will help to give you good quality, but not like, you know, a good measure. I'll go to the third one, cost of inspection and testing. Once you uh, make the product, you get it inspected, you get it tested. Okay. Certainly again, this will help you to find out whether the product that you produced, okay, is of good quality or not because you all will inspect it, you all will test it, 100% sure. But then in this case, again, that will not guarantee that customer will not return the product. Okay. Now, if you have done the complete chapter, then this cost is going to be called as appraisal cost. Cost that is incurred after you make the product. Okay, to ensure that it conforms to the quality. But just because you are going to be spending more, that itself does not measure whether there will be zero returns or not. Fourth one now. Quality certification from external agencies. Again, this is appraisal cost. You basically take the quality certifications, okay, to communicate to the customer that boss, our quality is very good. But this itself does not ensure that your quality was actually as per whatever the customer had perceived. Okay, so therefore even fourth one is not correct. As per me, number two makes maximum sense. Cost of product returns and replacement. Try to be thinking this is exactly as per your objective. We want to be having zero defective sale units. So therefore, if ever there is a return from the customer, okay, customer says, I don't like this product. He will send it back to me. For me, that product now, the cost of that, okay, is nothing but bad debts kind of a thing, okay. Bad debts in a sense, it is a loss for me because now he has returned that product. So therefore, now I'll throw it, okay. Sir, you can try to modify it and send it back. That will again cost you. So therefore, that is nothing but replacement cost. So therefore, I guess this thing will properly measure. Replacement cost might also include you send the product customer did not like. Okay, he told you take it back. We took it back. We sent him another product. So therefore that courier cost is again, is again our cost. But why did this thing take place? This thing took place because you did not match the quality perceptions of the customer. So if you want to be having zero defective sale unit, that means you should not be getting any sales return then you should try to measure this data point cost of product returns and replacement cost. Okay. So this is the explanation one by one or whatever I have given. So therefore correct answer should be two as per me. Second should be the correct one. Yeah, that's the correct answer. That's it for today for this video. Uh, I'm taking good amount of efforts to be ensuring that I bring the best, best content to you. Ensure that you share such videos whereby we try to be like, you know, explaining all the business funders to all your friends who will be requiring it. And apart from this, okay, we have our complete course in case you all wish you can be enrolling for that. Okay. Thank you. I'll see you all in the next lecture. Take care. Bye.